Hey, we're back. I'm not sure what happened, and none of my audio recorded for any of these videos. So this ought to be fun. I'm going to have to record a secondary track for all of these uh, for like at least three videos, which is like an hour and 40 minutes. I'm not really sure what I was doing out here. I think I was talking about things we've already done, places we've already been, places we should go. The craziness that happened. Then over here, I may mention the fact that after our last video, I ran inside to do a test run just to see what it was like in here. And um, I mowed down a bunch of guys. Pretty soon we're going to twitch the camera. No, nope. not here yet. Happened in a few. Here we go. And I start talking about all the guys that I mowed down inside there. There's about 15 or 20 of them in there. And uh, yeah, it went. it took about five minutes. It was something I had cut out of the video because I chose to end it for the night there, thinking it was going to be a long time, and it, it didn't take really a long time at all. So we could I could have closed it out with that one, and then had this one be all looting inside the building. But, hey, that isn't where we ended up. Okay, now we're inside, and Nick has this assault rifle that I have no idea where he got. I don't remember ever giving it to him. He just picked it up, I guess. Um, yeah, so anyways, so we got to deal with these raiders that are here. <laughs> They're trying to break into the evidence locker and failing. So I'm going to try to chuck some grenades at them, and we'll just uh, sit back and enjoy the carnage for a few. Watch his trick shot. Boom! I think I killed like three of them. It was amazing. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep chucking grenades at these guys for a few moments, and then we'll uh, we'll move on and go scout out the rest of them. Something that happens here is I find a line through that wall, and then I lose it, and I can never find it again. There was a line to chuck that grenade through that hole, and it would have made things so much easier because there is someone, like, right there. But, you know, doesn't work out. So I end up chucking a grenade off the wall here. Because, <laughs> you know, that's what I do. All right. Uh, yeah, and then we come around the corner here and we we take out this one. With an amazingly placed throw. Half off. And then I think she stim packs herself. And Nick gets shot. It's kind of a cluster here. And since these videos, I don't know, they, they keep being like some kind of weird, unspecified recording error, so I've been doing short clips of audio. So uh, I'm probably just going to go quiet for a minute and let this happen. What the? What the hell was that? Someone there? Must have been one okay, cut the shit. Who is that? Please don't hit the rolls again. Someone's coming. There's something out there. Oh! 
I think that might be it for the raiders. I don't think there was that many more. If there were. I think there's one yelling. Oh, there's two more. That's right, they're up here. I went looking for them because they somehow completely evaded everything. But it's because they were in these doors right at the beginning. <laughs> of course, I reload every time. I figured it was a good time to throw one of those. Got one. And there's one left. And that, as they say, is that. Now we're just going to loot the joint. And, um, yeah. Not really a lot to find in here. I'll come back when we find the winter holotape. collecting dust. Actually, I'll pop back in here because I just hacked this terminal and it, you know, went pretty well. So we're activating the Protectron because I love Protectrons. And I'm choosing the Law Enforcement Personality because I know it's not going to interfere with anything I do. And that if it stumbled across somebody, it would take them out. And um, that was about all the thought that went into this. This is weird. This is like recording director's commentary for a movie or something. But, uh, yeah, just trying to remember, like, what I was thinking or what I was doing at the time is just very difficult. I, I do not recommend this at all. You guys definitely, if you ever record your own videos, make sure your audio is working during the video. It's just so much easier on everybody involved. Um, I'll come back in a few.
nice. Okay, personal logs. Log entries from 92077. Let's see, some of these are corrupted. Some of them are not. Um, the screen's really tiny of <laughs> my editor, so hard to read some of these things. So I went back to check because I thought that one might have had details, but it didn't. So log entry 102277. I'm getting too old for this job. We have to deal with one more loose cannon officer playing by the by his own rules. I'm going to lose my damn mind. It's not Willison destroying private property again. It's that maniac Gibbs putting his life on the line. I swear this whole squad is the reason I got this ulcer. The heartburn doesn't get me. It's the constant trips to the bathroom. Getting old is a bum deal. Thank God only three more days until retirement. Then maybe I can take the RV out into the woods, rent a cabin, and finally finish my novel. Funny thing is that this is just before the bombs drop, so... In three days, he's probably long dead. Unfortunately, poor Sergeant Dave Mallory. He, so close to retirement. Probably so close to the weekend, too. The rest of this was just turret control and stuff. So, uh, I'll come back when we find anything new.
All right. So here we are at the evidence locker. I think that other key I found in the bathroom would have been for the chief's office where the computer was that I just read. So we're going to loot the crap out of here. All this stuff was on the... It's I forget if it's on that monitor that we're reading. I find one that has like a log of like all the stuff that we found. And it talks about all the the cigarettes and the, the booze that we're finding in here and the mini nuke. And the fat man and all this stuff. It's 2850 cals. That's actually a really good score right there. And yeah, I landed two two mini nukes out of this room, which is pretty damn sweet, considering. <laughs> Missed that bottle. And uh, yeah, this is just a bunch of... I'm going to loot all the crap that's in here. A lot of these are empty bottles, which means I think the police drank all of the whiskey after everything was all said and done. And I was having weird glitchy issues with um, picking things up. I don't know what that was. I'll have to go check that one out later. I, I don't actually, I don't think I watch it in any of these next three videos. In fact, I think I remarked about it when I picked it up. And then I never went back and actually watched it or listened to it. So we'll, we'll pick up on that one later. This is just all stuff thrown all over the floor here. I don't know why there was no... You'd think there would be, like, one of those keys would work for this one. Or, like, my unlocking the safe in the other room would also unlock this safe, considering this is in the... the evidence locker? Who knows? I feel what was in here, though. There's just a bunch of... Yeah, no, it's just a bunch of pre-war money and... bullets and... There's a couple of stim packs down here. Some more buff out and crap over here. Stuff I don't need. I remember remarking that I'm going to sell all the buff out because I really I have no use for buff out considering my my mod. So that's going to come up in the future. Um, there's a couple of things there. So yeah, a couple couple steps down the road, I might end up selling a whole bunch of drugs off somewhere. Who knows? But that's it for the evidence locker, and I'll come back when we make it to the next place. Got it. So I think about here is where I'm making my final go-round, essentially, of the whole building, because I just want to make sure, like, it's my final sweep, because we were done. We picked up everything that we could. And uh, I think I hadn't come down this way before, so I was trying to figure out what the difference was. Um, it's really just the same. It, you can get here from the other side. I just hadn't come in this room for whatever reason, so I didn't realize they linked together. But there's another terminal here. And this terminal... Eventually, I will get to it. This terminal... So there's the winter tape. Up on the... 
There we go. Good, you finally picked it up, you jerk. Alright, um... And once we finish looting things, we're gonna go in here in this terminal, and it's... It's locked! And I forget if I figure out the words quick. I think I do, so I'm not gonna skip over this one. I won't fast forward through this one. I wanna say it was real easy to figure out the word, because I got likeness of two when I was like, oh, there's only a couple of words that actually fit that. So, caves and rates it wasn't. It ends up being sizes. Or fixes. One or the other. Over there. Yep, so it was fixes. So we, we brute forced it without having to go clear up anything. Even though I thought about maybe going back to things, do things. Because actually I just noticed as I was looking at there now, Jones was down the bottom. And that would have also fit that whole scheme. So here's all the various arrest records of all these people here. This guy had the wallet, the comb, and $50 American, which we found in a locker somewhere. The next guy has... Corrupted audio, uh, corrupted file. Uh, let's see. We're over here. Leather vest, wool neck cap, and motorcycle keys. Sadly, there's no motorcycle keys anywhere to be found. He had an unlicensed laser, though. I think I did find a laser gun in one of those lockers. Or not lockers, but in that in that chest. Uh, he had a watch. He had boots. He had black suit jacket, a hat, $23.07. He had something with intent to distribute. I think it was probably the cigarettes. If I remember right? Could be wrong. One of these guys had the cigarettes. And that one's another corrupted file. So that's the end of that terminal, I think. And uh, let's see. There's another dead guy. They're everywhere. They're just hidden behind stuff. And I forgot I was looking at things. And actually, that's a dead girl. These raiders, they all look the same from different angles here. And then I'm like, hey, I killed those people, and I came in this way, and how did I not come in this th this door? Why didn't I come in this door? And uh, we're going to roam around the cell for a bit, hunting the corners, checking for things. Um, some dude over here really had a field day. Buff out stim packs and stuff. I don't know how he didn't like break out of the cell on his own. Probably could have, just like forced the door open. And, uh, let's see. There was nothing in this one, if I remember right. This was just the one that goes out to the other the other door. And then we make the final, final sweep of the building. And we're just about done here. I've only got, like, four minutes left in this video at this point. Meta knowledge, because I can see it. Um, yeah, so I'll just let my, let my, uh, myself have at it. Good on you, past self. Go run around and find stuff. Okay, here we are with the final terminal, the uh, the last piece that I needed before we leave this place. So this is where the holotape logs are, and it's going to tell you that they're on loan. So one's uh, one's in the evidence locker, one is on loan to Precinct 8, which we already have from the Fens District. That was the first one we got when we did all of this. Um, informant logs, this is just telling you, like, uh, picking up a lot of chatter recently from Eddie Winter's boys asking after Jennifer Lands of South Boston. Ran background on the name, and turns out she's engaged to Nick Valentine, one of the detectives running Operation Winter's End. Request made to superiors to fast-track the two of them for witness protection, or at least inform them of danger. Request is denied. Higher-ups don't want to compromise ongoing bad TFL investigations. So these guys could have protected Nick and his girlfriend. But they chose to follow bureaucratic red tape instead. This is just other stuff. So this is where you find out like where the cigarettes came from and where the rocket launcher, no, the um, the fat man came from and the buff out stuff. There's 158 bottles of buff out and there was not 158 bottles of buff out in there. Um, that would have been kind of cool to run into. Let's see. 
this one up here. McMillan's got a... Uh, he had ceramic containers of moonshine turned over to Biohazard Disposal Division. So it's all gone. 26 bottles of liquor. This is where all the, the whiskey was coming from. Uh, it's in the lockup. The, there was a trunk with distilling equipment. And then the black suicide logs. This guy had a 10 millimeter pistol recovered from him. He had a 10 millimeter bullet recovered from him during the autopsy. And he had a 10 millimeter bullet recovered from the walls of the apartment. So he, there were two bullets, which is strange. Like he missed himself the first time. Is so it's like dark gallows humor here. He missed himself on the first shot, and he fired again. And then they, then he got himself, which is um, you know, suicide's not funny, but they. You know, you, you try to find some kind of something to go with that. Um, this is about it, really. I think we're done here. Uh, I'm going to go roam around a little bit longer. But in the end, we just sort of go outside, and I think that's everything. I don't have any more clips I can make on this one, so I just have to record this all the way out to the outside. Saying goodbye to my buddy here. I don't think I found anything else. We were pretty much done. That that body was just there. He, I don't know if he glitched out or if he just like stopped moving. How I missed all these things, I don't know. There might be like a vase or something around here that I pick up. Yeah, there we go.